Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the Glock 19 Gen 4. Basically, this is a update video. I've got at least 7,000 rounds through this pistol and I wanted to provide you guys, uh, like I said, an update video to share with you guys how in the world did I get 7,000 rounds through this, what has been my experience with this, what have been some of the pros and cons to it, would I recommend it to anyone that may be looking for one of these on the used market, and then where do I go from here? But before we get into that, I have to take a second to thank this video sponsor, and that's going to be Anchor Gold. If you guys are not familiar with Anchor Gold, it is a way for you guys to purchase precious metals. And in a market that is as volatile as it is right now, this may be something you guys should start looking into. Now in the past, I have purchased precious metals, specifically silver by the ounce, and I have to shell out hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get what I want when I want it. Anchor Gold goes about it a completely different way. Basically, it allows you to make payments on an ounce of gold, and then once you meet the market value for that ounce, they will mail it to you and uh, you'll have precious metals with you uh, to help pay for things should something ever happen to the US dollar. This does a couple of different things. Like I said, it allows you to get precious metals in your hands, but it also allows you to fit purchasing precious metals into your budget on a monthly basis. So if you guys are interested, by all means, check out the link in the description below to Anchor Gold. And again, thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's get into it. Where or how in the world did I get 7,000 plus rounds through this pistol? And I will say the vast majority of the rounds shot through this pistol is going to be through training. I did a lot of training with this pistol and that's going to include training with people like Daniel Shaw, uh, Tactical Response, you know, James Yeager with Tactical Response. I took his fighting uh, pistol and fighting rifle course uh, and just to give you guys kind of a uh, perspective on how many rounds fighting pistol is that's 1200 rounds just in that one course but Daniel Shaw, James Yeager and Tactical Response I've trained with Ken from Provictus Group I have also trained with um, SNS Training Solutions out of Kansas City and uh, a few other people as well well over 4000 rounds through this pistol just in training alone. And this is something that I highly recommend. It's not something that is necessary for someone to own a firearm, but I highly recommend people getting out with their concealed carry pistol and training. So if you guys are interested, sound off in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to give you some recommendations. But the list that I already gave you, those are gonna to be tops on the list in my opinion. From there, I also wanted to uh, get into shooting competitions. And that's one of the main reasons why I originally purchased this pistol was not only to have a concealed carry pistol, but also something that was going to be viable for shooting competitions. So I went ahead and uh, purchased this and it has probably got at least 1500 rounds through IDPA and three gun matches. So it's done very well for me. It's been middle of the road, realistically. It hasn't put me in a category where I'm going to win matches, but at the same time, I've never came in last. So <laughs> it's done me very, very well. And then the last bit of rounds to put me over the 7,000 round count has been just me being at the range, whether that be doing videos for YouTube or me verifying the zero on this pistol or me just doing my drills that I would normally do off camera. 1500 rounds is very easy for me to uh, run through this in five years. So purchased this in 2016. And like I said, over the last five years, it has done me very, very well. Now let's talk about some of the things that I have done to this pistol. As you can see, I've got a stippling job that was done by Williams Gunworks out of Wichita, Kansas. And uh, it's, it's really nice. I really do like this stippling job. Uh, it's aggressive in the hand, but it's not abrasive to the skin as you're carrying this against your body. And that's something I really did like. 
Would I say that stippling is necessary? No, it makes it look cool, but at the same time, um, with a lot of the new pistols that are coming out, the um, stock or factory stippling or texture on the grip is um, good enough, is, is better than good enough. So, uh, but at the time I wanted to do something that, um, you know, gave it some character at the same time, having some functionality to it as well. But I will say the biggest thing that Williams Gunworks did was they put an undercut here on the trigger guard and that has allowed me to get a lot higher on my grip of this pistol to help mitigate recoil as well. And that's something I really do recommend if you guys do anything to your pistols and undercuts, uh, especially on the Glock series of pistols, I would highly recommend doing. One of the other things that I have done to this is also put a Zev spring kit in this. And I would say um, if this is going to be a concealed carry pistol, I don't know if I would recommend that. If it's this is going to be a competition gun, by all means, yeah. But uh, what I did find, especially running through fighting pistol with tactical response, was that a, the Zev spring kit caused me to have a lot of light primer strikes. And I eventually just had enough, especially after that course, I had enough with that uh, malarkey and just went back to the stock spring kit and have found that it has run very well ever since. So uh, with that being said, for a concealed carry EDC type pistol, a Zev spring kit, probably not the best thing. So, but I tried it out and I learned from it. One of the other things that I've done to it is I've put a uh, Fax and Firearms barrel through this. Uh, this is actually the second Fax and Firearms barrel I've had. I had a gold one, now I have a black one. Uh, the gold looked cool, but I think I like I like the black better, I think. Um, and it's got about 2,000 rounds through it, I would say. Uh, the stock barrel uh, had the majority of the rounds through it, and uh, it had no issues whatsoever. Uh, that I could that I could tell. Uh, Faxon, same. Um, it's threaded, so I have the ability to attach a suppressor to this and have done some suppressor work with it as well. Obviously, as you can see, I've got a Trigicon RMR Type 2 on here, and this is the uh, 3.5 MOA dot on this particular one. Uh, it has worked extremely well with this pistol. I've really liked it, have no issues whatsoever. Highly recommend RMRs and Hollow Suns as well. And then as you can see here, I've got the PL Mini from Olight as the uh, light attached to this pistol. I know a lot of people don't have um, a lot of great things to say about Olight, but I've had zero issues with the PL Mini in the three years that I have had it attached to this pistol and have been carrying it. One of the great things that I do like about the PL Mini is the way that the light is turned on these toggle switches has a good amount of resistance on it that you're not going to inadvertently hit it, even if I'm hitting it right now, as you can see, it's not turning on. Some of the other ones like the Streamlight TL TLR1, uh, if you just barely hit that switch, it's going to flick that light on. And in a situation where you're trying to kind of blend in with the darkness, um, that could be a big problem. So that's one of the reasons why I've always liked the PL Mini. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. I totally understand, but I've ran it and have enjoyed it. So what has been my experience with this? Uh, it should be uh, no shock to you guys that this has run very well. It has been extremely reliable, barring the you know, light primer strikes with uh, that Zev spring kit outside of that this has run very, very well. The biggest concern that I've had with this pistol has been what is inherent with the Gen 4s, and that's going to be the erratic ejection pattern. Sometimes when you're shooting, you're gonna see rounds just kind of dribbling off to the side. Other times it's ejecting just fine. And then sometimes you're gonna have rounds that are ejecting directly back at your face. And I knew that that was going to be a concern when I purchased this. There were a number of videos way back when that talked about that. They sent their pistol in, they had it fixed by Glock, came back, no problems. I've never done that. 
and I continue to still have rounds come back and hit me in the forehead from time to time. Now, as it stands right now, I'm seeing like maybe one or two rounds every hundred. Uh, and for me, that's not that big of a deal because I am so hyper-focused in what I'm doing as I'm shooting that something kind of hitting me in the forehead or brushing me on the head is, is not going to be that big of a thing. I'm going to be laser focused on what I'm doing. But for some people that may be a concern and I totally understand that and wanted to make sure that you guys were aware about it as well. I will say in the first probably 500 rounds, um, that was happening quite a bit. I would say probably half a dozen times every 100 rounds. But since then, I would say that it is uh, dropped to a point where I don't even really even notice it anymore. Not that I don't notice it, but um, it's so infrequent that I couldn't really even tell you when the last time it has happened. So those have been my uh, biggest concerns with it. Experience with it has been great. I would recommend the Gen 4 to anyone who's looking to pick one up. Maybe if there's one on the used market, someone comes to me and says, hey, hey, should I pick one up? I would say, yeah, yeah, by all means, pick one of these up. But where do I go from here? And that's kind of the big question. That's what I've uh, kind of making this video for. Uh, I'm going to set this one down. This is no longer going to be my concealed carry pistol moving forward and I am actively searching for a replacement. Now in the interim, yeah, I'll still carry that. I also have my P365 that I carry that I really like as well, but I'm also looking for other pistols and they have to meet certain criteria. Are they comfortable to carry? Do they conceal well? Are they accurate? What are some of the additional features that come with it? And so one of the first pistols that I'm looking at to swap out from the Gen 4 is going to be the CZ P10C. I just picked this up and let me tell you, just in dry firing this pistol, man, this thing is nice. I've heard nothing but great things about it, but is it perfect? I don't know. I can already see there are some things that um, would say it's not perfect. I did want to get the optics ready version of this pistol, but unfortunately I just, I, I can't really find one that was in a reasonable price. Came across this uh, in Kansas City. It was very well priced, so I jumped on it. And uh, yeah, so far, I don't think I'm going to regret it, but is it going to be right for me as far as in concealed carry pistol? We'll see. I'm going to put it through um, maybe a concealed carry course or uh, you know some training or something like that. Maybe uh, take it out to an IDPA match and see how well I'm able to run with it, but uh, definitely going to look into it and see how well it does. So that is the uh, P10C, the first one that I'm looking at. And then the second pistol that I'm looking at, you guys are probably going to laugh at. You'll probably scoff at me and that's okay. But I'm looking at the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. <laughs> and I get it. Yeah, you're going from one Glock 19 to another Glock 19. So broadening your horizons isn't really a major priority for you. But realistically, I think that the Gen 5 Glock 19 is enough of a difference when it comes to this pistol that it is kind of a new pistol, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Obviously, you got a Surefire X300 Ultra on here, and then the Hollow Sun HS507C on here. I'm really excited to see how this is going to uh, work as a concealed carry pistol. I can already tell you that between the Glock Marksman barrel that they started putting into the G5s and the um, the Hollow Sun. This is really, really super accurate. I was able to get groups at about an inch at 25 yards. And for me, that's really good. That's really good for my abilities uh, in shooting at 25 yards. So looking forward to seeing how this pistol fares. But I need to ask you guys, what other pistols should I be considering? I know that I've already done a review on the Canik TP9 Elite SC. I think that is a good viable option for a concealed carry pistol, but realistically, is it going to match up to a P10C or a Glock 19 Gen 5 or even a Glock 45? You know, there's a lot of different options out there and I wanna hear from you guys 
what would you like for me to check out as far as new EDC pistols? Sound off in the comments section down below. I will let the cat out of the bag here and let you know that I do have a Walter PDP that I hope to have in my hands here in the very near future. Uh, I am going to be borrowing it from a good friend and uh, we're gonna take a look at that and see how well that does. But I'm also curious to see what you guys have to say as well. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much to Anchor Gold for sponsoring this video and thank you for you guys hanging out and checking things out in this video. It is awesome that you're here. I really do appreciate it and it makes me want to do these videos all the time. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below and we will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye.